Well, in all fairness, guys, I did give you a heads up that we were in for an interesting storytelling session, or rather a conversation with an amazing storyteller. So this is part two of Candy Ntwiga Derito's story. So, at about, so somewhere when I joined, I got my, my first baby, he's seven, um, 2000, 2013, yeah, that's when, that's when I got my baby. And now he, he had turned two, and I was going into the third year, and I get the each at the third year. I was going into the third year, but then in that third year, I was also expecting uh, my second born, Gadoni. Now, it was easier to handle Gadoni. I think it's easier to just handle second bonds. Yeah. So when I was on maternity, actually before when I was pregnant, I saw this, this opportunity for the Tech Women Exchange Program. Yeah. So I looked at it and I'm like, I could do with a break. I've been in, in, in Oracle for almost, I have been there for three years. I could do with something different, learning something new, um, re-equip re myself. So when I applied, I didn't expect to get it, especially that they said uh, we don't support family, we don't, as in, we, if we win it, it's you and you, you by yourself. Yeah. So even when I went for the interview, very pregnant, uh, they look at me and they're like, you understand, um, we, we only sponsor the primary person. I'm like, yes, and you're pregnant as you come for this interview, your child will be like two months when you're supposed to go to the US for, for the exchange program. I'm like, I understand, but she's my second child, I'll handle. What they didn't know is that I knew there is no way I was going to leave my baby behind and I was going to go <laughs> with one of my mothers, either my mom, uh, my mom or my mom in love. Um, and we would figure it then. So I have that thing of, let's do what is important now. Don't look at the problems and then stop. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so indeed, when I went for the interview and I knew they, they didn't want to ask me because of, you know, being right. They don't, they, they don't want to ask me this question, but then I'm like, it's okay. I know what you have in your mind. Just ask me. So that's how, because I needed it to be addressed before I leave yeah. and they can know my position so they don't determine it for me, yeah. which is also very important when you're working in an industry where there are many men because sometimes decisions are made for us. So you have to learn as a woman to take the decision for yourself. So when you're given the opportunity, um, it's assumed, like now it's always assumed. I was in a conversation the other day and they were saying, when you're a new mother, it's assumed, people assume that you want to just stay at home and take care of the child. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and it is, a, it is not a wrong assumption. And it is not a right, as in it is, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But what I say is, as a, can you give me the choice to decide it as a woman? So if you give me that choice, then it's better. And I wanted to be given the choice. So anyway, so I got into the exchange program, went to Silicon Valley, amazing, amazing time, because they take you to the big tech. So you, you're in Google, you're part of Instagram as well. You're in Facebook, LinkedIn, Symantec, um, of course, Microsoft. You're in this space with global leaders and it's women who are telling you, we made it in the Silicon Valley. Yeah you can also make it wherever it is you are. And so you leave feeling so empowered. And by the time when I left, I felt so challenged because up to then, I, most of the things I had been doing was so me, you know, mm. uh, go to school, get a pay rise. What are you doing for yourself? You know, your family, whether it's me and my family, it's same thing. And so it made me stop and think and question. If this global women leaders who are so busy could make time for me and others like me to just mentor and coach and guide and encourage and all that. How would I say I'm busy? And even they have families, they have so many other things they are balancing. So I just felt challenged them. And then knowing my story, knowing um, the struggle through growing up and the struggle in teenagehood, and especially that in our system, if you're going to do STEM or not, if you're going yeah. to do sciences or not, is determined very early. It's determined in high school, really, at that form two level. So it's like, how can I help change this narrative? So because you, you give the most from what you have, I just thought, she goes tech. Let me go back to high schools. Let me spend time with the girls. Let them understand that it's fine. Your past doesn't have to be as neat for yeah. you to have a future that's bright. Yeah. yeah. And that's how she goes tech came to be. So I work with other women because uh, I realize you, you need to work as a community, of course. So I work with other women who have also had varied experiences so that 
different many other ladies and girls can also relate so we go to high schools we talk to them and now i don't only bring girls who are from tech or from the science yeah um, so i i because I, I, I have I have friends around me, right? Friends who've done well for themselves. Friends who've also walked different journeys. So we go, and, and friends who want to give back. So we go into these spaces and just talk to girls. Because as a girl, it, we're not saying all of you do sciences. We're just saying what you are now, it's nothing to, you didn't choose it. Yeah. So just embrace it and make it work. You know, and then life, as much as it sounds, it's, it may seem like it's the worst thing right now in life, yeah. it gets better. So it's really, She Goes Tech is just to encourage teenagers and young girls to just own their story, to, to just realize that life is about them. Yeah. Um, even though you may have fights with your folks, which we did as teenagers, that, that passes, you know, uh, just own it, own it as, as, as the girl. Does yeah. it also take care of, you know, like people who went through high school, they mm. finished, mm. probably didn't do STEM or yeah. any mm. of that, and probably later in life they're interested in it. Is it like, does it like, take care of them as well? Um, so right now, so that, that, that would be linked to like some of the opportunities I see with Microsoft, because okay. Microsoft, um, we have programs where we have like return where women if women took some time some break maybe to bring up family because we we are known to do that as women mm -hmm. we have programs where we can with the people with the right aptitudes can come in and we can train them like uh, matters tech and then they get into the ecosystem from a she goes tech perspective right now it's really just encouraging just building the pipeline the the gist is let's build the pipeline let's hand over the button so so that um as me, who's now where I am at, can I get someone who's maybe five years behind me, then I hand them the baton. Yeah. Then they do that for someone else who's five years younger than they are and continuously in that sense. So that we are, we are forming the pipeline for the boardroom from classroom to boardroom. So at least we have more women. Instead of having five women in a class of 60, we have, can we start with even having what, 15, 20? Yeah. Uh, at least then the odds are bigger. Then once that is done, if we are in the, in the interviewing space, we are going into the industry to practice. After you've studied, can we make sure that we remain in tech and you're practicing tech? Because that's another place where in the pipeline, there's, there's like the girls drop off. Yeah. And we drop off because you feel like, um, you feel like the same experience I had. You're there lifting, because when you start, you're, you really start with the hardcore things. Yeah. And if you're an engineer, like I know the electrical engineers, engineering guys, you're required to climb poles and posts and all of that. Not all women are comfortable doing it, but then again, we can't generalize and say women can't do it. Yeah. Give the woman a choice. There are those who will be like, we are, we are climbing poles, awesome, let's do it. You know, if you're a civil engineer, maybe they need to do one or two things which are hand lift, heavy lifting. Um, I know I was talking to one of my colleagues who decided she was a telco engineer. And she, liked, she decided to leave because telco engineers work very long hours. Uh, and because you're supporting critical services. And she's like, she wanted to diversify from the telco side more to the IT side. And because the IT side, you seem like you have a little bit of a choice of how many hours, the hours you work and she was starting a family. So there are many variables that we have throughout the seasons of life. And based on where you are at as a season in life, I just want the women to understand that you're not, it, you're not unique, it's not unique to you. Others have gone through it and you can have someone you can talk to. So she goes that gives that platform. And I love that also in these forums that we have as women, we mm. talk about love mm. and marriage yes. and relationships yeah. and business. That is also creative a space where you also come in and talk to women. Mm. The tech language, you know, yes. just to be like, you know what, let's just go tech a bit. Yes. But have you seen uh, the change or the increase of women and the mm. reduction of that gap in terms mm. of gender as you go up the ladder? Or has it reduced? Mm. It's better now, it really. Is better now. It is better now. Um, when I joined the multinational world, we were very few women. If you look at women who've been in the industry as long as I have been, we are not that many, and that's why you would we know each other, right? So, but when you look at just maybe five years younger or ten years younger, then you find there are more. 
Um, so there is improvement, not as much as it should be, but there is. Is, okay, and it's things like she goes tech, and I've also seen like women mm. who have really gone up the ladder in terms mm. of uh, technology yes. are also going back to create, you know, yes. room for other women or encourage other mm. women to just get on it, yeah. and like you say, just give a woman a choice. Yes, to just let, let her decide, let her decide for decide. herself. Yeah, and like you said, right now we we really are a community of what I would call the older women, and we, we encourage each other to just reach out to the, to the younger girls. So there are, there are many she goes texts out there, with, you know, whether it's uh, her innovation, whether it's, it's a, there, there are many, there, there are many, there's a tech women community as well, we encourage um, each other to just reach out. So as women, we are trying, we are trying to do, to do as much as we can. Yesterday was the International Day um, for the ICT, for the girl in ICT. Uh, we had many of us reach out and just send out messages to the younger girl and encourage them. And tech now is everywhere in life. It is embedded in everything life. If you look at agriculture, if you look at healthcare, if you look at education, if you look at now, we are shooting this du during COVID-19, uh, working from home, everything. Tech is an enabler in every area of life. Now, if you choose not to understand tech, or if you choose to say that tech is for those people, you are missing out on a key aspect of life. So it is important as a girl, as a woman, to actually concern yourself with tech. And don't think about tech as the technology per se. Think about it as the problem you're solving. Think about it as um, what are you bridging? What gap are you bridging in society? Then look at what technology can help you in, in resolving that problem. Absolutely. Now, 2020. Mm. <laughs> January. Uh -huh. You started this year on a high. And all the newspapers were candy, 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 candy. So guys, just so you know, I've been trying to get candy for a very long time. She's been avoiding me. But we're here now. We thank God. I don't know if it's COVID, but... To the house, Kwanzaa. <laughs> as in you would have come to the office and get your hair in my home anyway. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Candy. But you are the country manager right now. Mm. Microsoft. How did that come about? Were you looking for it? Or was the same thing about uh, mm. referrals? How did that come about? And mm. what does that entail now? <laughs> um, so the conversations started in August mm -hmm. uh, 2019. And I wasn't looking. I was fine. I was fine. I wasn't looking to move. If anything, I was looking to take a sabbatical. Mm. Um, yes, I, I felt like, okay, I've been doing this for so long. Can I take a break and figure out what problem I'm passionate about? I know I'm passionate about areas in education and financial inclusion. Can I go figure out how I can use tech to bring that um, solution? So that was planned. Um, so the sabbatical was going to come in June this year. Um, then in August, I'm going about my business and I, I get this call. And the call is, um, it wasn't public knowledge then, even in Microsoft, but the, their, their country leader was, was, was looking to transition to a different role um, out of the country. And they needed to quickly start to identify profiles that they would work with. And they asked if I would be interested. Um, <laughs> so I got the call, and every other call I would get before then, it was obvious, and we knew, we had discussed with the family that I'm taking a sabbatical. So it was always, uh, no, I'm, I'm fine, I have a plan, I'm fine. But when Microsoft called, because it's Microsoft. It is Microsoft. <laughs> you pause. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you pause, and I remember coming home and um, telling my husband, um, I had a call today, it was an interesting call. So he looks at me, he's in tech, so he, he, he gets it. He looks at me and he's like, I heard me about the call. Then I'm like, oh, Microsoft called. They want a country leader. What? And he looks at me and he's like, what? He did exactly what you did. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? It's, it's, not, it's, it's not a biggie. As in, relax, we have a plan. <laughs> and then he looks at me. He's like, you're mad. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> we don't have a plan at this point. He's like, you're mad. I'm like, actually, we have a, we have a plan. Remember. This is what we're doing. This is what, what, what. So I try and convince him. Then he tells me. So he hears me out. So he knows me. He's like, okay. So he hears me out. Then um, we call it a day and we go about. 
So I've not still responded to, to Microsoft to say if or not I would be interested to be considered. Um, then I think two days later, he brings up the conversation again. He's like, did you get back to Microsoft? I'm like, but we said we have a plan. Then he says, well, it doesn't hurt. Just hear them out. Yeah. And I'm like, this is how it starts. This is going to be downhill. <laughs> I said, this is... <laughs> This is, this is how it starts. Just hear them out, really. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, 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 let, me, let me have these conversations. On hill. Um, and so now I had to take, the hardest period for me was actually September and October, about two weeks, the last week of September and the first two weeks of October, because I needed to make a decision. Yeah. I needed to, to know, are you taking the sabbatical um, and going out, I was, I was, I was actually going to go for one year study, I was going to go for one year study as I think, uh, you know, one of the top the global universities. So I, was, so I was like, you got admission, which was also in itself a big deal. Yeah. You, you got admission into this, you asked to defer for a year, they gave you the chance, you were gonna go in June. So it was so hard for me, it was so difficult for me. Um, but then back and forth interrogating, praying heavily about it, I'm, I'm quite spiritual. And I just felt, I remember, I remember precisely, it's on 12th, the, it was 2.59, the, the one for Kipchoge. Yeah, 2.59. It, it was before, is it 159? 1.59? 1.59, 1.59, 1.59, 1.59. So I remember the day for 1.59, it was 12th October, I don't forget. Uh, it was a Saturday, and that's the day I felt God tell me, it's fine. We can do the study again, you can take the sabbatical later there's something I need you to learn by going to Microsoft and there's what I need to work with you for in Microsoft. And so that's when I knew, okay, it's done. I'm not going to take the sabbatical. I'm not going to go to school. I'm not going to go to school. Uh, it's going to be Microsoft. What does the country lead mm. entail? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> It's really, so the, the mission for Microsoft is to empower every person and organization in the planet to do more. Okay. Um, and that's a mission we live out in everything we do, internally and more so externally. So we look at society and we want to create impact. So as a country leader for Kenya, I become the custodian for that mission and to ensure that Microsoft is driving impact in the society. So which is, and, and what's, that's the most ironical bit. The reason I was gonna take a sabbatical is because I needed to figure out how to make a difference. By the time I was doing the, one of the interviews you, you alluded to, one of the yeah. ones you saw, and I talked about the um, village and how I'm giving back to community. Yeah. It had become such a burden for me that I needed to figure out how am I driving change in community, whatever that community is. So it's not your typical village in yes. Embu. It was village in another. In a, yes. Yes. Yeah. So and 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 I use I use the village of now my Miko village in in Merwin, whatever, mm -hmm. to um, to think of the different because it's it's just an you know how Africa is. What is in that Miko is probably in every other country. It's true. Yes. And so if I figure out what is the pertinent issue in that village, then it means it can be replicated in every other village somewhere else. And so that is the, that is the reason I was going to take the sabbatical. So now to join an organization that lived that mission every day, I consider it a privilege. And that is why, for me, I say Microsoft was a pull factor. It was an alignment of time, purpose, seasons, everything. So it was just a pull factor. So as my role, it's really that. What impact can be driven? What change can be driven? How can tech be used to make a difference in community? How can that difference be done yeah. in Kenya? Yeah. Do you still do poetry? Um, I teach storytelling. You do what? 
I do. I teach storytelling. I discovered, oh, I love it. I discovered storytelling. <laughs> oh, it's the art part of my life. I love it. I love it. I, I, I love, 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 love storytelling. Yeah. So can you do something? Little. Like yeah. Something nice? Of what? Of a story. A poem or something? I, 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 it's not a poem. It's a story, true storytelling. I teach how to tell true, true stories. Story okay, so. So, what are the basics? You know, maybe because, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, so if you were to teach me, okay, what are some? Yeah, cool. so 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 what? Okay, in this journey of creating impact, yes, um, I got into a yet another a, 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 a bit of training, yeah, on storytelling, and the storytelling. What what happened is, I realized people who are driving impact because now I started to interact a lot with people in the. I thought first it would be in Kenya, then I realized I'm actually interacting with people in the world. I got an, an opportunity to meet people who are driving advocacy and making change globally. Yeah. And the theme which was being taken round was, if you're in advocacy, there's a reason you have a personal story as to why you're in advocacy. Yeah. And there's nothing more powerful than doing advocacy by telling your story. And so then, because of that, I learned how to use storytelling for advocacy. Uh -huh. And you so I told your story at the UN General Assembly. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And that is how I got to tell my story at the yes. UN General Assembly. Yeah. And because of telling the story then, then you realize I'm speaking on behalf of the every village girl in either the global south yeah whether it is africa or some asia which which relates with us but the global south so because of that then you relate people relate with it with you. yes sure. and people relate with you yeah. and so i also decided since i enjoy this thing i can start to teach storytelling so that's how i get my energy i do it pro bono i do it um yeah i volunteer my time i work i like to work with the uh, uh, people who are more on the science side because as the scientists and the STEM people, tech people, engineers, da, 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 mm -hmm. we think that you, there's no create, creative mind in you. But then I, I like to draw it out. I like to draw out the bit of, no, you have a story. There's a reason you're doing engineering. There's a reason you chose this. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, that's what I do in storytelling. Do you live by any philosophy, any mantra that, you know, keeps you grounded? You mm. said you're also spiritual. Yes. Could be a verse in the Bible or something as we come to the end of this conversation. Um, it's really... Because of the... And, and you said I shrugged when you said I've accomplished so much. Yes! <laughs> and I'll Sad. tell you... <laughs> you know, there's nothing new under the sun. No. And King Solomon, one of the wisest... Um, men quoted, who's quoted in the Bible, said he tried everything and he realized everything is vanity. It's vanity of vanities. In my small way, I have experienced it. Because you remember me saying you're dreaming to have a six-figure salary. So yeah. you get the six-figure salary, you're so excited. You go buy the car, you're so excited. But the novelty wears off so quickly. Um, I get invited, exchange program, I'm going to Bay Area, I'm going to Silicon Valley, I'm going to Google, I'm going to Microsoft, I'm going to... Excited, again, surely the novelty wears out and you need something else. You're here, you're young, you're saying, I want the man of my dreams, you get the man of your dreams, you get married. So it's a cycle. Yeah. Um, here I get invited, you went into assembly, global leaders, tell your story, I thought, in fact, that was the defining moment for me. I'm like, Surely this is now arriving. You know, <laughs> you've been you know, arriving a like lot in this journey. Like what? So you feel like this is arriving? Yeah. Then I go tell the story. Yes, it's a highlight. But then I want the next big thing. Yeah. Then I realized it's all vanity of vanities. There is nothing too big out there. There is nothing out there which is not reachable. I am a strong believer. There is nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. Just put your mind, pursue it, but then it's not a big deal. It's all vain. You will accomplish it and then go for the next big thing. It's vanity of vanities. If you dwell in the moment, it's okay. So you think it's okay to just follow your dreams and do those big things. Yes. But do not make them define who you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's nothing really. Yeah. As in, it's... 
what changes? It's it's yeah, you still eat one meal. As it, it's still I still believe she's accomplished a lot and I'll be saying that from over here, then she can explain vanities later and stuff like that. But Kelly, you've been such a blessing uh, yeah. today. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Yes. <laughs> Even the suspension beats. I bet no other person has that story. Yeah, that's that is true. <laughs> That is true. Only my close friends. Now, yeah. the whole world clearly is my close friend. But they, yeah, but I'm, I'm comfortable with myself. And all the best. Thank you. Our country leader. Oh, we can. It was amazing to meet you. I had fun. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. Guys, the iconic Candy Twiga and Dorito. Yeah, so you know how we do every single Wednesday. And I hope you have learned. Go for that dream and nothing is it possible and please if you're watching this and i know we are all at home and you're in high school and you're thinking this is not the best environment ever compared to my other classmates all those things changed mm -hmm. we went through high school it did not define who we are now i was a nice maker i'm still talking so yeah do make the best out of everything mm -hmm. so love you guys but you have to go see you next week on wednesday for another iconic woman Today I am talking to the techies, well especially women in the tech world because I got you guys, I got you. <laughs> the iconic woman today, okay fine, sorry, now I just need to start one final one. <laughs>